So, uh, I want to welcome you to our seventh little film uh, in our series pattern of the month. And uh, we're on the M. It's uh, the last days of the season. The water is really low. We've got a bright blue sky and really, really tricky conditions. Um, do you like orange flies? Um, I don't fish that much orange flies, but there's one pattern that's been with me a long time, and, and uh, that's the uh, what I call the General Practitioner Special, or GP Special. If you look at my full box, there's an orange compartment, and uh, I actually fish those quite a lot when when other things does not work or when they, the water is really um, dirty of course but it's always good especially fall to be able to present an orange fly and um, it's given me many fish I fish it this time but I also fish it on the fresh run Baltics when they come up it's a it's an excellent fly for those uh, aggressive uh, fresh running fish um, I fish it normally from maybe uh, 18 20 millimeters up to about four or five centimeters I never fish the general practitioner or the GP special uh, in the really big sizes then I fish a, a moving uh, hair wing instead but it's a special fly it's flat it gives a good profile and uh, sometimes it's uh, it can really do the trick for you so I hope you enjoy this tying and uh, I will go down here maybe tie one on and see if I can catch a fish So, uh, do you believe in imitations for salmon? To imitate food and try to catch the fish that way? I don't do that. There are some million uh, patterns that are imitations. Uh, and um, I'm going to tie a fly today, my version, on a fly that was first tied by Colonel Esmond Drury in uh, 1953. It's called the General Practitioner. It's a complicated fly to tie. Uh, I'm going to tie a modern version and the way the, the version that I like to fish. And um, with the General Practitioner or GP that we more commonly call it, it's tippet feathers. Tippets are the thing with the, in the general practitioner. It's the feather that's totally dominant and makes almost all of the fly. Uh, in the original one, there's quite a lot of the red breast feathers from the from the golden pheasant too. But in my version, it's the tippet feathers. But look at this. When dyeing tippets, when you dye them orange, the original one looks really really pale and I never use this uh, for for uh, my uh, GPs today I always use the dyed one and when you deal with feathers very few of the of them look like this that they are uh, the capes they are perfect like this but most of them have bent feathers like this and i'm going to show you now the little trick that i showed you before uh, first of all so you can start by preparing your feathers and if a feather looks like this it's pretty messed up but on the bird it's never like this it's always perfect so the thing is to steam it and uh, that's why i have my little boiler here if you steam the feather it will come back to the natural uh, shape and I just hold it over the uh, steam a bit perhaps you got a faster boiler than I have and you can see how the feather will start to change uh, shape 
and how it turns into be nature's perfection. Very, very nice. So start by doing this so your feathers can dry a little bit while you tie the body. Okay, so I'm gonna tie this now uh, with the orange medium and uh, black extra small. And uh, what I do, I, of course I use our little cutter and uh, uh, I just slide in the medium hole and I slide in and I decide how long I want it and I do it about two centimeters and I just cut it. It's very, very simple. You get perfect edge and uh, it's a really handy little tool. Uh, unfortunately, our tools are packed and on the way to us. And uh, I had quite a few mails from you, from uh, you guys saying that uh, I was teasing you with their new tools and I was hoping they should have been here by now, but they will be very, very close. So uh, in a couple of weeks time, they will be out and you will see it on our social medias and the web. Okay, medium, orange, extra small, black, and I make sure I put it on and I slide in the black tubing quite long into the orange. So I'm sure that uh, uh, this will be secured in a proper way. I'm gonna tie today with a 12 volt thread and I'm gonna tie with a 12 volt. And uh, I, either I do it with the orange one or I do it with the white one. And um, since there are so many of you uh, who are subscribing to our packs where we have the material packs or the ready flies, but to the material packs, uh, this time uh, we are sending you a white thread. Uh, because we sent an orange one the other month. Okay, so I start by putting on the thread. Make sure I put a few extra turns over the part where uh, the, the part I cut on the medium. So the medium will grab the extra small and hold it and keep the flexibility without putting any glue on. Very, very strong and also very flexible that will make a fly that is really strong. Then I take a few strands of a straight hair. Uh, you can use any, any hair. Uh, I uh, make sure when I tie this in that it will be about as long as the tube. So I get a good length of a tail here. Move the thread back, tie it in. If I think it, I need to have it down a little bit more, I just take my thumbnail and press it down on the sides and put one or two turns on. Cut this off, or you can tie it in, but I cut it off like that. And then to get some extra motion to the fly, because this has this is a fly where I don't have a soft swimming wing, but I still want it to, to move as much as possible. I, uh, <coughs> sorry, I will use um, rubber legs. And to be honest with you, I don't use rubber legs on so many of my salmon flies, more on my sea trout flies. Uh, but they are handy. They create uh, a lot of uh, motion and vibration, which is sound. And, uh, you know, the most important uh, sense of the fish is the sideline organ. The sideline is what picks up what we will call sound or vibration. So I think these actually will help quite a bit. I tie in one each side and I make sure they're long, hanging down. Few turns. Cut it off. Do the same on the other side. Of course you can tie them in at the same time. I don't do this here. I just cut them off and tie them in. Move the thread back. Make sure they are pointing out sideways. And uh, if you don't think they point out enough, 
you can take the thread and you can pull the thread really hard then they will move apart a little more okay so i'm gonna do a body uh, with the hackle meaning i need a ribbing and i use uh, a gold hollow braid tied in underneath always try tie in all my braids underneath i think it's it's handier and i will start my turning from the right position on the fly uh, i'm gonna put on dubbing we have two dubbings we have the regular dubbing that's done on a uh, very translucent fiber and we have this glitz dubbing uh, that is a flashy dubbing it's very long fiber and it creates a very flashy body and i take a little bit at time tie it in and make sure that I grow the body on a shrimp. If you believe this is should be a shrimp imitation, uh, you should uh, taper where the thickest part is in the back of the fly. I do the opposite. I want this to taper just the same way as all my flies. I want it to grow to the front. Uh, to move away water, create turbulence, and also have that drop form. Even if there's not a wing, swimming wing, uh, I want that shape of the fly. Okay, and I do a little bit at the time, I move my thread uh, closer to the head and make sure that I will leave uh, enough space to tie in the feathers and hackles on the medium and not on the extra small all to make this fly more durable okay here's a few long ones i can just clean this a little bit you can see how long these fibers are on the dubbing which is really really nice but uh, it's better to for me to brush them out afterwards okay i'm gonna use a plain orange hackle uh, I choose a feather that's long enough to wind down the body and I strip off the soft part and I tie it in and since this feather is very thick and uh, a bit hard I put some extra turns on to make sure this will stay when I put it on. Pull it out and I'm uh, uh, See that this is right, yeah. I'm brought up without the times when we have good hackle pliers, so I'm I'm used to doing this by hand. But now when we are we have our own little plier uh, that is really really handy and that will hold the feather and not make it slip. I'll use this uh, instead of starting winding this down on the body like this i always start with one turn here if i don't do that the there's going to be too few fibers here so i always start by doing one here and then i will wind this down make sure it stay on the fly stay on the needle wind this down four or five turns and um, the good thing one of the good things with the our plier is that it's heavy meaning that i can leave it like that and the feather will not come loose i can just leave it and it gives me both hands to spin my braid and to cross over the braid and i cross uh, or sorry cross over the hackle more here cross over the hackle uh, to make sure that um, this is secured and here I pull really hard I want to pull the braid all the wide all the way into the dubbing tie it in underneath if I want this really extremely strong I'll fold this back and tie it in again this way it's trapped, can't slip. Take it away, take away the tip, 
close like that and uh, you can see I have a couple really long fibers here then I will brush this make sure this is not tangled too much I want this to be pointing out take the brush and uh, it's our own in our toolkit and it's the meanest brush I ever used it's tougher than velcro it will uh, pick up the fibers and I will get the fibers to mix nicely with the hackle when I think I have enough volume I take this and I brush it down on the sides like this so I get a flat top because here is the place I want to put my tippets and my tippet wing okay so this is now ready it's ready for the tippet and when it comes to tippets I will move my thread here and I will show you one thing you see tippets can be tricky you want to tie them in flat like this but they very often twist like this I'll show you Perhaps it doesn't twist now because I'm going to show you how it twists. But if I take this and I'm tie it in, uh, the thing that very often happens is this. When I tie it in, it will twist like this. And why is that? You think that you do something wrong. But it's not. You have to understand how the feather is built up. How the feather uh, looks from the start before you tie it in. And like all feathers on a golden pheasant, the center is in the top, it's oval this way, and it moves over to be round, and in the bottom it's oval this way. So the, the whole thing is to tie in on the oval flat part, then the feather will stay in the perfect position. So. The only thing you can do is pick the right size of the feather. Okay, we'll see. I'd like to have a quite long one. Uh, this is a big uh, general practitioner. I, that was too big. I want to have a feather that with the black part on the first feather I tie in, will be about see if I have one that's flat and good here since I didn't use my little trick uh, with the black bar should be the the, the the second black bar should be about where the tubing uh, starts so if I look at this what I do is I first take away this little feather all of them have it and then, oops, shouldn't have my thread there. And then I just put it in flat, make sure I get this, the length I want, hold it in and just tie it in. And if I not picked the right size, it will stay flat like that. It will not twist in any way. Okay, so that's the first one. Always cut. To make uh, to clean up and then <coughs> uh, to uh, make this let's see what how what length I have here to make this a little uh, heavier I tie in one more feather and I do the same I take this and I take away the small feather and I go down in size and I make sure I have a feather where the black bars will be put on top of each other and I just hold it down and I tie it in this way I'll try to turn this now so you see this way I get a very flat top of the fly a broad fly uh, it's almost like uh, I do uh, with the butterflies it's the same principles I want to create a fly that is broad, gives a good silhouette. And then 
we take this away. I'm just going to lift this a little bit before I get my scissors in here. And I cut it off and make sure I cut it close. Uh, <coughs> then I'm going to take uh, a couple of strands of flash. And I use, of course, our own um, SSS flash. And I pick out from the hot orange and flames color, I pick out one of the fluorescent, uh, phosphorescent and fluorescent uh, fibers. And I will tie this in on the side like this. I want to have it long and wide. And I take that and I tie it in with a couple of turns and I cut it and I do the same on my other side. See that this is fairly straight. Make sure it's long so it goes well behind the tippet feather and tie it in. Okay, so I'm going to tie this now with the technique I use on a half turbo cone, meaning that I need to have very little things here, very little stuff to be covered by the cone. Of course, you can put any cone on, but the general practitioner or this GP special why I call it, it doesn't have a good balance. Normally, wing will steer the fly like this. This is flat like this. If it's not balanced by weight, it's got a tendency to turn in the water. And I want this to fish flat. That's why I want to have the half turbo that's got more weight to the bottom. So what I do now, I wanna, I'm going to put on one more tippet feather, but first I'm going to put on a hackle. Look at this mess. It looks like I've been here a month tying already. Okay, uh, <coughs> what I do here, I take a little bit of glue and uh, I will, as before, use support and just put a little drop of glue here to hold the tippet feathers uh, and make sure that this cannot slip out. Otherwise, they are slippery and it's easy that you lose one or two of the feathers. Okay, so I'll take an orange bird. Um, I use a shikaboo or a skin. You can use any soft feather here that I'm gonna use for front tackle. And I will make sure I have the right length of fibers and I take away the part I don't want. And I always tie in all hackles in the tip, uh, all front tackles. And I do like this and I create this little use support and I create this little triangle like this. And that's what I, what I tie in here. Few turns, use my plier again and uh, Oops. And make sure that all the fibers are doubled, are, are leaning backwards. Take this, hold back the fibers on the part I'm tying in and just wind it on. And it's gonna be uh, one or two turns or two or three turns, depending on size. And I tie this in underneath I'm almost not used to having a uh, hackle plier that is this heavy, so I'm afraid of letting go of the feather, but this is so heavy that you can just leave it there. Okay, and I cut it off. I split this. And the thing now is that I split the top of it so I divide the fibers, maybe you can turn it, oh, I don't need to show you, you know what I'm doing here. Like that. And now I have to be careful because if I'm gonna use a very small half turbo cone, I cannot have too much stuff here. Uh, but the only thing I'm gonna tie in now is one more tippet. 
coming down in size, making sure that this is really small enough to be tied in, take away the little feather and this small enough to be tied in on top full feather where I have the black bar, the last one there, right under the top of this. And I just hold my finger on the top and I tie it in. And since I now use the right size of feather, this will not twist. It will stay, I'll try to turn it for you, uh, it will stay in the perfect uh, position like that. Okay, almost ready. The only thing I do here now is that I cut this, slide in and cut as close as I can. Make sure this is not slipping. A little bit of glue, tiny little bit of glue. And then uh, half turbo, and I'm gonna use the extra small one here. I'm gonna use the uh, fluorescent orange one. And uh, the ones with we have with that are uh, colored uh, with paint is a little bit thicker than the other ones. Uh, Uh, that don't have the paint on them so they slip a little bit a little bit tighter and I pull it down almost all the way since I put the already put the glue there I take the thread away and then I move the fly out of the vise and I pull it down just pull down the cone tight and make sure it will cover the tippet feather where it's tied in. Hold it, cut it off about one to two mil. Take my little uh, lighter, that's right here. Sorry for that. And I will melt this down to secure the cone. Make sure I melt it down so it's really tight too. Perfect. Two uh, rubber legs like this that will move. If I think they're too long, I can take away a little bit of them. And uh, here I created what I call the general practitioner special or the GP special fly. I've taken quite a few fish on this. It's actually a really, really effective fly and it's very, very different from most of my other flies. Uh, if we turn it and you look from underneath, you will see how wide it is. Uh, it will create a really good uh, volume, a good silhouette uh, in a pretty different way, actually. Translucent flashy and orange okay so this is the maybe the most common way i tie those but sometimes i want to have a really small little uh, general practitioner and i do it on a ttt or now on a btt the brass turbo tubes that are right here now uh, and uh, I'll show you how I do it. I do it a little bit different. Okay. Organizers all over the place. Really good box. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm gonna use uh, one of the fluorescent orange uh, small ones for the small fly. And uh, perhaps I can show you, I can show you one of the difference. I have some of the BTTs here and they're so new. So uh, all the colors are not here. That's why I'm doing it on the TTT now. But if you look at this, they are different. They're very, very thin. They weigh almost nothing. This, that's the biggest one, 
is for sure a lot lighter than the smallest of the TTTs, the tungsten one and the brass one. And there's another difference here too, is that for this, we wanted it to be as light as possible. So we took away the little uh, part we have in the front, made them a little slimmer, and they are extremely light. Next uh, month, I'm gonna tie on the BTT. I'm gonna show you the differences and I'm gonna show you how I use the system now. I've been fishing the BTTs this season, but I only have samples with out color so that's why we did the ttt now okay so extra small black start by pulling this up melting down a little edge uh, make sure it's uh, cold before you touch it or the you will press together the the plastic if it's still warm, I take a little plier. Just it's easy for me to hold this when I when I pull this down. So small one on a TTT or a BTT, uh, and uh, what I do is that I start by putting the thread on uh, onto the TTT here, and I cut it. I take my rubber legs and I start by the rubber legs, putting them out on the side like this. Of course, better to do them too long than too short. Make sure they are even on the side. And uh, the, it's easy for me to do it one at a time. Take this and uh, let's see, do this side and uh, put this in right on the other side and it's always when I tie here I don't see anything because it's supposed you're supposed to see everything okay so I have the rubber legs there okay and then I take a tippet and I take a one that is uh, small and uh, that I tie in on the flat part as I told you before and this, I will have to raise it a little bit, pull it a little bit, so it's really the flat the way I want it to be. Uh, maybe I should show you. Should be look like that with the rubber legs ha uh, sticking out and the tip it right flat on top. Uh, I did then take one more feather, and it should be quite a bit smaller, uh, so I get the bars on top of each other. See what I have here. Uh, I didn't prepare the feathers. I didn't cheat before tying. Take this, take away the small feather underneath and make sure that this is now suitable so the bars will cover each other. Tie it in with a few turns. Hopefully it doesn't twist and then I Cut it off. Maybe I have to lift it a little bit like this. Here we go. I need another turn there. And then I put on a little glue here. Support and just a little tiny bit of glue on these ones to fix them and make sure that they will stay there and uh, that you can catch a lot of fish on them, of course. Okay, and then I take one of these uh, fluorescent, phosphorescent uh, flash fibers and I make sure they're long, sticking out behind the tippet and I tie them in one each side and I don't need more than one or two turns here. Uh, just tie that in and I do the same on the other side. Make sure this is in the right position, there it should be. And I do the same with this one here. And cut it off. And then I do uh, almost like on my uh, Samurai's, I actually take a little bit of doping. 
and to get a little volume and and a little bit of of uh, uh, sparkle to this a little more sparkle than the two strands so i just hold this back and i dub this a little bit in front of the wing take a few more strands here and then i cover up the tippet and i brush this make sure i get out some of these fibers uh, to create a little bit of extra uh, translucent volume you can see how evil this is i just hook it i can pull out the fibers and like that now i will take my i can turn it and show you looks like that now and uh, i will now take a small hackle and just put a little tiny hackle in front of this and i will use a very small feather or a feather with extremely short fibers because i don't want this to be too bulky i just want a little bit of hackling on on this and i create this little feather or I treat this little feather, sorry, same way. I pull apart, use support, cut and create that little triangle and tie that in. And now I move down onto the extra small tubing. Take the plier and pull back everything so it's not too much tangled and I use it by the handle and uh, just do a couple of turns of hackle and tie it in and like on all my BTTs or TTTs I always end up with the micro turbo disc and the good thing here is that the the micro turbo will also cover the thread and it will create a fly that is extremely durable doesn't matter what happens here in the front uh, the cone will cover the thread and make it really really strong just a tiny bit of glue you can put it a little bit away from the hackle hold it back take the thread pick up some glue and if I have some extra glue here, I can take it away, but I can also do this when I pull this down, I can pull it down and twist it. That way I will spread the glue and I will pull it down and twist it all the way down, close to the fly, take the thread away, take the fly out of the vise, Make sure it's tight, cut it off, and on this, on this, uh, these uh, micro turbos, I, I save very little plastic, just one or two mil before I just melt it down. Very fast and handy way to end this little fly. So, a tiny little micro maybe i have to cut that away a little bit but i can do that afterwards or i can do it now i hate fibers that are not the way i want them you can see the rubber legs spreading out and you have this little shield of tippet feathers the two on top of each other creating this little gp special fly Two ways of, where is the other one? Two ways of tying the same fly, the same pattern, but uh, to do it this way, uh, it's hard to do them small. This way you can do them one third of this size if you want to do them really, really small. And on the BTT, they are extremely light. You can have them right in the surface if you want. Or you can fish them if you want them for the faster water uh, like that on the TTT. 
So my version on the general practitioner. Um, an orange fly is always in my box and very often uh, I fish uh, the, my orange choice is a general practitioner. As long as they're not the big flies, then I, I choose other patterns. But it's, uh, it's a hundred little fly and um, uh, you see how you uh, put the tippets on and that was maybe the whole trick uh, on this fly. But if you like, like me, you've been swearing a million times before you found out the trick, perhaps I could, uh, I could uh, save you there a bit maybe. Okay, thank you very much for, for watching this, our seventh little uh, film and uh, next week i'm gonna tie on our new btt's the brass turbo tubes that are extremely light uh three sizes and uh, uh the, where you can use the same techniques as the on the ttt's but on a very very light fly and where you also can have different bodies, different heads, different weights, and it opens up for what I have found a very, very effective way of fishing loose bodies with different weights. So next week, it's going to be a BTT. I won't tell you the pattern. You will see shortly. And again, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.